Enoch on the extraordinary life and eternal adventures of whom it was said and Enoch walks with God because God took him by David Alexander English for all those who have come here to remember who we really are where we really come from and why it is we've chosen to come to earth if you're reading this now you've chosen the path of reawakening and remembrance for this incarnation as per our cosmic pre-life agreement what follows is merely a reminder of what you already know as an infinite and immortal child of the light the time has come for the children of the light the children of the one to reemerge and through their pure awareness of the absolute truth of our immortal nature and being inspire the world to its greatest potential For this, we all came to life on earth this time. Whatever else we thought we were doing with our life and as our work is serving this now and has been all along. Part one. Who walks with God? Chapter one. Standing out on the edge of the grassy plain. The quiet is deafening. Haven't seen another person in days. Building a field stone wall to keep the herds and flocks from the new saplings of olive, almond, apricot, fig, and of course, my favorite pomegranate hands and back are worked from bending scrounging digging carrying and stacking field stones day after day it's hot still and dry here this afternoon stopping for a long moment a long breath my tunic soaked with sweat wiping my brow and sweat from my eyes taking a long drink of water savoring this pause way off in the distance on the other side of the valley now there are roiling black thunder clouds moving low and away over the mountains leaving just a hint of rain the air charged with energy and the smell of earth of the life in the soil 
the richness of the dirt, the wealth of possibilities. I love this smell, this scent of dreams and promise fulfilled. Someday, these trees will be a shady grove, an edible landscape my grandkids and great-grandkids will play in, be nourished by, inherit, and pass on. Then, bending back down, lifting the next big rock and placing it on the wall, finding its perfect balancing point where it might remain for decades of centuries. Bending down for the next one. Each stone tells a story of patience, of how it became and got here. I feel the full weight of each stone, its relationship to the earth. As I grasp a stone to pick it up and carry it to its resting place, I feel what story it has to tell me of its journey. And as I find its right placement, I think of my descendants receiving this message I am sending them of my love. My pile of workable stones growing smaller Soon I will have to go find and dig up more. Should make it all the way to the corner before dark. That's if I don't have to go too far to find more stones. Was that my name? I listen, bending down to pick up another stone. There it is again. I stand up. I swear I hear my name. I stop and listen. Nothing. I bend back down to the work. I grab another big boulder and place it on the wall. There it is again. Someone saying my name. Looking up from the half-built stone wall, there is no one else here as far as I can see in all directions. I look in the direction of our old house, but there is no one and nothing there. Then in this instant, I feel unmistakably that there is someone right here with me, but there is still no one I can see. Then, in this now moment, as I look to the mountains, someone is standing right here in front of me, as though they have been standing here all along and for some time. On reflex, I jump back, nearly tripping over the wall behind me now. But quickly, looking into the overwhelmingly kind face, anyone can see that they are harmless. In fact, there is something else, undefinable, yet reassuring, even soothing about them. Is it a radiance? Didn't hear them or see them walk up. Don't have any idea which direction they came from. They raise their open hand and greeting. Out of habit, so do I. We reach to grasp hands. As our palms touch, I feel a shock. At once, 
I am so overwhelmingly tired and sleepy, like the weight of the world has just fallen on me. Finding myself on my back and falling asleep right here and now, visitor or no visitor. Part of me is embarrassed, but my arms, legs, and eyelids feel like they must now weigh a ton. I succumb. I surrender. I feel like light. In my last attempts to stay awake, I see the visitor standing over me, peering into my waning eyes. I, I see them reaching with their hand down to me. With my eyes closed now and falling into deep sleep, I feel them taking my hand in theirs. And just like that, they help me back up on my feet. Or so it seems at first. For when once again standing, the visitor points back to the ground. Here is someone else laying fast asleep at my feet. It takes me a moment to realize that this stranger on the ground is me. Turning quickly to look at the visitor, to ask what is the meaning of this. Yet in this moment, they rise up into the sky and remain hovering there like this is the most natural thing for them to do. They are beckoning me to follow. And to my stunned amazement, I do. In my mind, I hear myself asking, am I dead? Just as quickly I hear, clearly, the visitors say in my mind, no, just sleeping. And as we then rise ever higher and higher up into the sky, I look back down and see myself laying there on the edge of the field in the late afternoon sun. <laughs>